In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Markham Pursuit HD underwater camera. I'm gonna show you guys uh, how I use this, the camera to get the best results, um, little tips and tricks on the on the camera that I've learned in the past two years, and my overall thoughts on whether it's, it's worth it to buy it or not. So, hope you guys enjoy. Oh, we're gonna catch some perch too, forgot about that. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we are. There's a good fish. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Come here, come here. There we are. Got him. That's what I'm talking about, folks. That's the fish we wanted. Yes. Now that's the fish we came out for today, folks. The funny thing is, is they get so much bigger than this. I mean, they get way, way bigger than this, but that is that is the the average fish that we want today. This is kind of your your average big cascade perch. Probably a male, because it's got no belly on him or anything, but oh, that's awesome. Yes. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I set up my underwater camera in the shack, okay? So this is the main thing you're gonna wanna do, is you're wanna gonna drill three holes about a foot spaced out from each other. The middle hole is unnecessary if you don't have another person. If you're fishing solo, just do two holes spread out from each other on each side of the shack. But if not, if you have another person with you, then drill one more hole in the middle. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is this little thing right here. And it's basically, it's it's an underwater camera tripod. Now, I think Markham makes one, but it did not come with the unit. So I believe I went on Amazon and I believe I bought Aquaviews brand, which they all work for each other. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that exact one um, and then it's going to come with on the back when you unravel it it's going to come with this little rubber stopper and this little rubber stopper you can take off but basically the point of the rubber stopper is to hit the bottom of that little tripod and it holds it up right there's kind of two different um, views that I like to use on the underwater camera the first one is a side view so for instance I'm gonna be fishing here right in this hole and the underwater camera is going to be in that one going down and it's going to be facing me this way. So basically the camera's here, the bait's here, they're almost in line with each other. Sometimes I like the camera a little higher and you just turn it one. That way you're kind of looking down and it covers a, a little cooler viewpoint. But either way, that's going to be the first one. It's going to be the side. The next one is going to be just straight down. And if you're fishing with two people, you're going to put it here and that camera is going to be faced this way. So basically it is just right and it's going to be probably, you know, six or seven feet higher than the bait. So if your baits are here, the camera is going to be faced like this. And what you would do is you would put the camera in that hole. That way, both, you know, whoever's fishing next to you and you are able to both, it's both in, you know, both your baits are in view of the camera. But if you're solo, I just put it in here like a transducer. So I would take my camera and just do it like that. And then if I hook a fish, if it's really big, I can take this out. Today we're fishing for perch. They don't fight that hard. I just keep this in here and I just horse them out of the hole. But that is how you could do it there. Those are the main two. You can get funky with it and you can turn that camera all different ways. But those are the two views that I use the most. The straight up and down I use more for perch and the one on the side I use for trout. Uh, that's just my preferences on those. But you can get creative and do whatever you want for whatever species you're targeting. It definitely takes a little getting used to and just kind of checking and seeing which types of views you like better. Um, yeah, and then some fish species react differently to the camera being down there. Trout don't really care. They're extremely aggressive and they just kind of like check out the camera. They're very curious. My guess is bluegill and crappie would be a little more spooky, a little more wary of that. So you may want to do that, that, you know, up down view to get a little bit better footage and to, you know, catch fish. Ooh, big one. Oh, that's one. That's what we want. That's what we want. Man, those big ones just come out of nowhere. Oh my goodness, those big ones just come out of no oh, frick. Oh, don't you? Oh, 
The second a big one pops up on the screen, you know, because he just beelines right over for it and grabs it every single time. My goodness, that was fun. That was really fun. <laughs> Another one of your, your average sized jumbos out here. Got a little bit more of a, a belly there. If I had to guess, that's a, that's a female because of the belly. Cool. Super cool. <laughs> All right, so say my buddy's fishing this hole. I'm in the hole right here that I'm kind of sitting on top of. This is the one we want our camera in. We want it to just go straight like this so that we both have a view on the camera. What I'm going to do is you're going to take this guy right here and you're just going to put this just like that. Um, some people like it kind of tall, you know, like this, because these are these legs are adjustable. So you can do it like that. I like it a little, little flatter. So I like it like this kind of right in there and these are going to have a little slit now that's where you slide the cord into so you want this facing away from you like that you would take your camera and you would drop it kind of put line it up in here drop this down and while you're dropping this down you're looking at your screen to make sure that you're at the right depth Right, so say I'm looking at it and right here looks good. This is exactly where I want it. Um, I can see the bottom real well. I can see both the baits, it looks good. You're just gonna take this little rubber thing, which has got a slit in the middle, and you're just gonna put it in. You don't wanna put it all the way through because then the cord, it's just gonna move up and down and you're not able to turn it. So you kinda have to click it in right to the side a little. If that makes sense if you guys can see that right there and then you can put this here and now if you want to turn the camera in this case since it's straight down there's not much turning that needs to happen but if you wanted to turn it all you do is you just take it and you just slowly adjust it just like this and turn it and you basically are watching your screen right so I got my screen right here in front of me I am watching the screen and turning until I get my bait right in the middle of that camera so I know exactly where to fish now, some people just hold the camera, you know, kind of in their lap as they're fishing. And that works real well when you're outside of the shack because you can kind of use your, your body to kind of cover it and give it some shade. Um, but I have a little better idea when I'm in the shack. I don't want to hold the camera. I want to have it propped up. And I'll show you guys what I use to hold it right now. Okay, so this is what I used to hold it. This is, it's actually just a lighting mount pole for um, like, you know, videographers, for like photographers in studios. It's basically to just hold a light, light stand. But it has a quarter inch screw here, which I have connected to a little ball head joint, which is really nice because it's adjustable. I can loosen it here and I can now adjust the camera however I want, which is just super, super helpful. I do have a little duct tape on here. If you guys see, I kind of made my own little shade flaps, which do help. Um, but they're not the end all, but they work a little bit, but that's how I hold it, right? So um, if I'm fishing, I'm going to sit in the chair to show you guys. So now I'm sitting in the chair, right? So if I'm fishing out of this hole right here, that is in the water and I have my camera. I kind of just put right here next to me and now I'm watching the camera as I'm fishing. So this is kind of how, if you guys see on the GoPro footage, this is what I'm doing. The camera's usually here. If someone's, you know, next to you, you can kind of just do this. That way, you know, both of you kind of have a view as you can watch it. But if I'm just fishing alone, which I am today, that guy goes here and that's how I do it. Bullet out fishing and spots as you are, but, um, but they're real forthcoming about telling people where to go, you know? So I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Mike. Mike, hold on. I got a jumbo. I got a jumbo on me. Okay. Oh, man. On. Oh, that was so cool to watch him eat that. That was so cool. Give me a moment. I'm putting the camera down. Oh, the, the phone. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Come here. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I was uh, on the on the phone with someone. And that fish came in, if you guys noticed, that fish came in real light. I mean, that fish was not very, um, you know, not very aggressive. Most of the, the big ones have come in and really kind of smacked it. But that right there is the definition of why the underwater camera is 
perfect for this scenario because that fish right there had such an incredibly light bite. There is no way you are feeling that on a live scope, on a flasher, anything else. I don't care how sensitive your rods are. This is a frostbite dipstick. This thing is super sensitive. I can feel so many bites, but sometimes on bites like that, there is no way you are, you are feeling that, that bite. So that is why the underwater camera for me, uh, especially with perch fishing, is so crucial. It is so incredibly important. Ooh, here we go, here we go. Ooh, nice, nice fish. Wow, they're just coming in every like five, six minutes now. Good one, good one, good one. Wow, we are finding them now, folks. The early morning was not a good bite, but the second that like nine o'clock rolled around, it has just been constant bites or constant fish on the screen like every five, 10 minutes. Nice, folks. Oh, folks, look at that fish. That is just a gorgeous, gorgeous perch, man. Idaho just, Idaho raises them different out here, let me tell you. You know what's funny is, is this isn't even like a giant, giant out here. I mean, I would call this a jumbo, I definitely would, but there are so many more fish in this lake that are bigger than that fish. I'm catching these fish, by the way, what you're seeing on the underwater camera. This is a frostbite, woo, this is a frostbite dinner bell. This is their smallest size. Uh, it's really, it's an awesome spoon. I love that little, I got a little, uh, I call it a little nipple in the middle there that kind of bangs around and I think it gives them something to kind of focus on when they grab it. Uh, I'm just tipping this with one little uh, white wax worm. That's all we're doing today. So pretty simple little setup. As you see, you know, these fish coming in are, are they're liking it. You know, the big ones in this lake, when they see a bait, they're gonna come towards it and check it out. And then it's up to you to kind of give it a little action and do your thing to get them to strike. So they really like that little thing. This is the smallest one. Using four pound today. Uh, I think these fish are, you know, pretty pressured at some point. So I like light line on that. Uh, using a frostbite dipstick. It's a 39 light. I think it's perfect for this. Those big jumbos, it kind of gives you something to horse them up but it's still really sensitive to, to feel some of those bites if you don't have the camera or, you know, just whatever. It's just a nice all around rod. There's also a lot of big trout out here, so it's just nice to have a light, something to give you a little extra, you know, a little extra flex if you were to hook a big trout. Shimano Stratic 1000 on the end there. And then my main line is like a six pound braid. I like a super, super light braid for these fish, but yeah, oh my goodness, awesome. I mean, what an incredible, incredible day. Now, some of you have probably already bought this camera and you're just looking for some extra tips and this video came up in your search results, but some of you are probably still in the market for an underwater camera and you're just kind of shopping around. And that's kind of my stage that I was in about two years ago. I was really, I wasn't sure between the Aquaview, it was the 715C and the Markham HD, which I have right here. So the main reason I went the Markham over the Aquaview was because a lot of reviews said that it did better in, in uh, dirtier water than, than the Aquaview. So apparently the Aquaviews do really well if you're fishing clear water, you have a lot of light, they're, they're incredible. And a lot of people say that the image quality on them is better than the Markham. But what people said was if you're fishing any type of dingy water, low light, a lot of different situations, you're going to want to go with the Markham. Um, and I've seen Aquaview footage and the Aquaview footage at this lake is also pretty good. I'd say they're, they're pretty comparable, but I will say comparing my footage to some of the other people's footage I've seen with the Aquaviews, I think the Markham is a little better. I do think it's a little bit clearer um, of an image on a lake like this that this water isn't super clear here. I mean, you've got to be relatively close to your bait and you know, even in the summertime, it's not super, super clear. So, um, you know, we also have a lot of snow over the top of the ice. So there's not a lot of sunlight getting through. So, you know, there's a couple, you know, instant, you know, a couple factors playing into that here. But I do think overall, if you're fishing dirtier waters, um, or low light conditions, you know, stuff like that. I think the Markham's better choice. 
I think if you're fishing in, you know, areas where it is crystal clear water and you don't have to worry about that type of stuff, I think the Aquaview is a little bit better, um, a little bit better footage. According to reviews, it does seem like the Markhams break down a lot quicker than the Aquaview does. However, you know, I have treated mine very well, but I haven't had any problems as of yet. And I'm on my second season using it. And during the ice season, I use it pretty hard. I mean, I'm using it pretty much every trip that I go on. Um, and sometimes I bring it out on the boat just to drop it down and kind of check stuff out out there too. But yeah, it's, it's an incredible tool. It helps you find fish, helps you find cover and rock and, and weeds and logs and whatever you need to find down there. You, you can get a lot of information using that camera without even seeing a fish yet. That's it just it's a huge learning tool. And if you guys notice, a lot of really good ice fishermen use underwater cameras. Um, a lot of really successful fishermen use them. And I just think it's an incredible tool to help you catch more fish. Hopefully I aided you in your buying purchase or I helped you figure out this product. Um, yeah, see you guys next time on Humbug Videos.